As summer begins to wind down, the Lake Orion community came together for one last major bash. The Orion Art Center's Dragon in the Lake Festival offered visitors art, music, food, and fun with dragon boat races on the lake. Orion Township invited residents to turn their clutter into cash during the outdoor community garage sale and comic and toy expo. And the Woodward Dream Cruise kicked off with a ribbon cutting ceremony in Ferndale and more than 40,000 classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods traveling a 16 mile stretch of Woodward. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have these stories and more on this edition of Owen TV News. The idea of an arts and cultural center in Lake Orion began in 1979 and the doors of the Orion Art Center opened in 1981. On the 30th anniversary of the Art Center's origins, their board decided to celebrate with a huge community festival and Dragon on the Lake was born. Recently, the community came together to celebrate the festival's 14th year with art, music, food and of course, dragon boat racing. The 2023 Dragon on the Lake Festival kicked off on Thursday evening and continued through Sunday, August 27th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as dozens of artists and vendors set up tents along Broadway and Flint Street. Visitors enjoyed music at the Dragon Pub and Tiki Bar with Sunset Boulevard performing on Friday night and the always popular Square Pegs playing to a packed house on Saturday night. Oh Lake residents got in on the fun on Friday night with the annual lighted boat parade, which has been organized by the Lake Orient Lake Association since 2010. Participants were encouraged to decorate and light up their boats for a chance at prize money donated by Ray C's Extreme of Lapeer. The fire breathing dragon returned to lead the parade that traveled around the perimeter of the lake. Judges on a pontoon boat were faced with the challenge of naming the top three boats. So the, the judges are looking for the you know, how much, what do you got for lights, um, the creativity, the um, uniqueness, and then the overall enthusiasm of the, uh, of the folks on the boat. Um, it's not just the lights, but it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the whole atmosphere um, of what's coming off of that boat. On Saturday, it was announced that Kathy and Rick Vandenboom took first place with their pirate ship netting them a cool $300. Second place and $150 went to John and Mary Richardson and Mike and Karen Frontera for their entry, Dragon in Paradise. Third place and $50 went to Mary Matthews for Camping Under the Stars. Dragon on the Lake began in 2009 with the Chalk Art Challenge and the event returned on Saturday, August 26th. Broadway Street became the canvas for 20 artists of all ages. The 15th annual Chalk Art Challenge invited elementary school students, middle school students, high schoolers, and adults to compete for cash prizes. Each artist was assigned a five foot by five foot space to create their masterpiece with awards and cash prizes handed out for best in show, best dragon theme, and people's choice. This is our uh, foundational event uh, for the Dragon on the Lake. We, even during the pandemic, we made sure we still had a chalk art challenge, so we have not missed a year. Well, absolutely what I've noticed so far this morning is that they're just having a great time um, and they're having fun and enjoying it. They're also, um, we have several people and kids that come back every year, so it, they continue to grow their art. Um, this is, as you said, one of the um, important things of the Art Center is that we provide an outlet for artists of all ages to um, get a chance to show, show off their creativity. While that was going on in the downtown area, high school athletes gathered in Greens Park for the second annual Dragon Showdown, a smaller version of the Dragon Boat Races. Five teams competed in the event representing Lake Orion hockey, volleyball, soccer, and defending champs Lake Orion football. Clarkson's swim and dive teams got in on the fun as well. When the wave settled, it was announced that the soccer team had dethroned the football team to claim the 2023 title. On the morning of Sunday, August 27th, more than 200 paddlers forming 10 teams arrived at Greens Park for the start of the annual Dragon Boat Races. 
the Taiko drummers return to kick off the opening ceremonies. Following a few announcements, teams made up of 20 paddlers, a drummer and a steersman began to board the Dragon Boats, provided by Great White North of Ontario, Canada. Every team took part in three races throughout the day, with the times from the first heat combined with the second heat to determine the order of the final heat. We talked to the team's captains from the winning teams in the first heat. I don't take anything for granted. Last year we got beat by some... Uh, Let's see, they were, everyone was eligible for Social Security and they beat us, so that's my goal, is that we'll all be eligible for Social Security when we win. Mystic Cove, Mystic Cove, Mystic Cove, Mystic Cove. What did you guys do to practice for this? We showed up yesterday. <laughs> we, we did about an hour and a half of practice and here we are today. And what exactly does practice entail? Do you guys go out on the lake? Use oh, the yes, absolutely. They We go through our roster, we see people, we get out there, we practice, we work on being synced up in our power and just working together. Now what about your drummer? How did you pick your drummer? Um, he's been a friend of ours for years and uh, we needed somebody tall and thin. <laughs> and really loud. Okay, and so Trust I hear... the job you want, right? <laughs> so it's either costume, best drummer, yeah. best overall. Yeah, well, the last three years he's gotten best drummer. We're proud of him. I kind of yeah. want that dragon trophy now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bring it in. Hype it up. Bring it in. Hype it up. One, two, three. Boom! One word of how you feel right now. Focused. Yeah! <laughs> is this your first year? This is our first year and the second time in the boat. Yesterday was first. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty pumped up right now. Okay, so yesterday was practice? <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, and what made you guys pull off this win today? Um, I think the uh, rhythm. We kind of equate it. Well, I'm not going to say what we equate it to. <laughs> it's just it's focused, focused in our rhythm. We really had it down. Boats and rows! Boats and rows! Okay, what's the name of your team? Lost at Sea. How did you guys come up with that name? This young lady, we work at a dental office, Lake Orion Family Dentistry, so we're trying to keep it dental, and this creative one here came up with it. And your team is comprised of mainly people who work at the dental office? Spouses and family members and friends. <laughs> and how does it feel? This is your first time competing in this particular event, right? Yes. How does it feel with this win? Um, Fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, winning's always fun. I mean, yeah, but we've had a great time working together and practice went well yesterday. I have high hopes. Do you have a particular rhythm? Um, this guy and his drum, Mr. Tooth. <laughs> and how did you select him to be your drummer? Um, he's our boss's youngest son, and I knew he would be good at it. Okay, and how do you feel being a part of this? Do you think you're going to come out with that win for best drummer? Yes, I definitely will, <laughs> especially with this thing. Between the second and third heats, everyone gathered near the lake for a flower ceremony dedicated to the loved ones who lost their lives to cancer. Proceeds from the sale of carnations benefited the New Day Foundation. For us for, at New Day Foundation, being a part of this is just sort of representative of who we've been all along. It's community, and that means so much because when people come together just to have, have a great time and to support a great cause, great things happen. And you guys got a little emotional with this. Talk to us about your journey to starting New Day. Well, both Gina and I lost our spouses to cancer when they were just in their 30s. And so almost everyone here has the same kind of story. They have somebody that they care about or love who has gone through a cancer journey. And the, the whole carnation ceremony uh, out at the water was really emotional. And, and so it just makes for a, a great day even more meaningful. After determining the seating for the final heat, it was revealed that Team OMG on a mission from God would occupy lane one, Dragon Down Parkinson's would be in lane two, and Floss at Sea would be in lane three. This is how the championship race played out. This heat, this is going to be a special city. Oh, come on, cheer them on, people. Dragon on the lane, 2023. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that. Oh, finish. Okay, I think I know, but I'm going to wait for the official. All right.
There is unofficial, unofficial. You're going to have to go to the Tiki Hut to figure this one out, folks. Teams ONG and DDP finished almost neck and neck, and when the times were posted on the board, it revealed that ONG took first place with a time of 1.5104. Team DDP came in second with a time of 1.5160, a difference of 0 0.0056. We caught up with Team ONG as they came off the dock. Um, we we uh, just really dug deep at the end, and and uh, we were getting helped by our, our uh, Sears person, and um, he was he was just pushing us, and so we were just digging deep. So we that's why we were just, we, we were happy with that because we came back from being a uh, you know a late start. How does it feel? <laughs> Great. I mean, it's um, what we, this is all a win. You know, it's it's uh, to, to be. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's top three, whether what, whatever happens with the trophy or first place. You know, it's just great to be here with the energy to support the community to come together in unity, um, especially at this time. So we're just really um, excited to support that and to be a part of that and and have fun with everybody in the whole thing. Race director Rob Cavanaugh looked back at another successful dragon boat race on the lake. Well, uh, today was a great day. We had perfect race conditions on uh, Lake Orion. We had uh, 70 degree weather, light winds from the north, uh, which gave us a headwind on all the teams, which made it more challenging, slowed it down, and it, what it did is it made the course a little longer than it normally is. So our times are about 30 to 40 seconds longer than last year. So uh, all the paddlers that have come out, all 10 teams, were absolutely fantastic. Team Shark Attack, their spirit was incredible and contagious, getting everybody amped up. Uh, Dragon Down Parkinson's, tough team. They wanted it so bad, but all the preparation in the world, you know, at the end, it, it comes down to that one team that can put that final last push together. So congratulations to OMG. Following the Dragon Boat races, participants gathered at the Tiki Bar on Anderson Street for an awards ceremony. The Super Squad received the award for Best Team Costume. Dragon Down Parkinson's drummer Jesse Green was named Best Drummer for the fourth year in a row. And Team Shark Attack won Most Team Spirit for the way they encouraged all the participating teams. Floss at Sea received ceramic medals for their third place finish. Dragon Down Parkinson's were called up to celebrate their second place finish and named the winner of the 2023 Dragon Boat Races was Team OMG, who gets to take home the beautiful Dragon Cup Traveling Trophy. As the 2023 Dragon of the Lake Festival drew to a close, we asked Orient Arts Center director Holly Nicosia to look back at another successful event. You know, it was a great weekend. Um, we had a little bit of rough weather on Thursday. We made it through that, got through the rough weather, and then the rest of the weekend's been beautiful. We had a great turnout for the boats, the market, all of our sponsors and volunteers came through. It was really a great event. The Art Center, I always say, is a magical place. I mean, I personally was not on a creative journey when I was younger, and I feel like the more we reach out to the schools and the community events we're involved in through the Parks and Rec and, and the Chamber, we're able to reach younger um, artists and we can kind of cultivate that spirit of creativity and it's, it's great. I mean, art can change your mood completely. You can have a bad day and do an art project and you have a different look out on life and it beautifies our space. Um, we would love to just get more art in our community, and that's our goal, you know, murals and our mini art gallery we have at um, our Anderson Street location. We just, you know, want to make the world a prettier place. The Dragon on the Lake Festival is the Orient Art Center's largest fundraiser of the year. Money raised at the event allows them to offer classes and exhibits throughout the year. For more information on upcoming classes and events, be sure to visit orientartcenter.org. You can also find them on Facebook. Numerous family-friendly events take place at the Orion Center throughout the year. Recently, Orion Township invited residents to get rid of some clutter while making a little cash on the side. On Saturday, August 19th, Orion Township hosted its outdoor community garage sale in the parking lot of the Orion Center. It was the second garage sale of the summer, with the first taking place on the first Saturday in June. 30 sellers offered a wide variety of items, including clothing, 
home decor, tools, and more. Well, one-stop shopping, I mean, you know how garage sales are. They're awesome. There's a little bit of everything here, tools, toys, indoor decor, clothing, a little bit of everything. Um, inside, you'll find collectibles. I saw some really cool dinosaurs in there, comic books. There's just all, everything is here. Inside the Orient Center, more than a dozen vendors offer comics, toys, antiques, and collectibles during the Toy and Comic yeah, Expo. Yeah. The first expo took place in 2017 and is held multiple times per year for fans of all things pop culture. Although sellers pay a minimal fee for table space, admission and parking is free to the public. Why do we do it? Well, we do it because um, it's our mission. It's what we do. We like to bring people into the parks, even if it's something that doesn't necessarily seem park related. Um, because there's something for everyone. It doesn't have to be all about athletics. Sometimes it's about strolling around with your significant other, taking your time shopping and doing things. We're all about families. We're all about bringing people together in common places to do safe and friendly activities. Next up, Orion Township Parks and Rec will host their annual fall festival of family fun on Saturday, September 23rd, beginning at 11 a.m. Families are invited to visit Camp Agawam to enjoy crafts, a petting farm, hay rides, carnivals, games, and more. Parking and admission are free. For more information, visit OrionParks.com. And finally, what started out as a small fundraiser for a soccer field in Ferndale in 1995 has exploded into a phenomenon enjoyed by car enthusiasts all over the world. The Woodward Dream Cruise returned to Oakland County and ONTV's Joe Johnson was there for the kickoff. Hey everybody, welcome to the 2023 Woodward Dream Cruise in downtown Ferndale. Woo! On Friday, August 18th, dignitaries gathered in Ferndale to celebrate the official launch of the 2023 Woodward Dream Cruise. Nine Mile Road was closed to traffic for the 22nd annual emergency vehicle show featuring historical police cars and fire trucks from neighboring communities. At 5 p.m., Dream Cruise President Michael Larry welcomed those in attendance and invited speakers to come up to the stage, including Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter, Sheriff Michael Bouchard, and even Ronald McDonald. Following the speeches, the group moved to Woodward for a ribbon cutting ceremony. After the ribbon cutting, dozens of emergency vehicles poured onto Woodward with lights flashing and sirens blaring to announce the start of Dream Cruise 2023. Yeah, here in Ferndale, we say, and I say we because I live here, uh, this is where the dream began. Uh, the Dream Cruise literally started as a fundraiser for a soccer field, the field of dreams, right? And uh, a group of people tried to raise some money by getting some of the restaurants up and down Woodward to pitch in if you came in your classic car. Well, obviously, it took off far bigger than anybody ever imagined. It was huge the first year, twice as huge the second year, and it's just uh, you know, it's an international event here, and, and here in Ferndale, where we're going to uh, soon we're going to break the ribbon in just a minute to cut the ribbon to officially dedicate it. We take a lot of pride in having started this amazing tradition. Of course, the Woodward Dream Cruise actually takes place on Saturday with over 40,000 classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods cruising the 16-mile stretch of Woodward between Ferndale and Pontiac, and more than one million spectators lined up to take in the spectacle. Even Jay Leno made the trip to Michigan and was spotted at several locations, including past Steiner's AutoZone Hobbies in Birmingham. The Dream Cruise has come a long way since its humble origins in 1995. Now, how many cities are about 11 or 12? Runs through Oakland County. So this has grown beyond a Ferndale event. This is an Oakland County event. Oh my gosh, it's an Oakland County event all the way from 8 Mile up to Pontiac. Probably now, in fact, I would say the center of it's really kind of Royal Oak, 13 Mile and Woodward area. That's where it's the most 
crowded, but Ferndale does it up because we block off Nine Mile Road and we have Mustang Alley here. You can come down and check out all the Mustangs, all the cool Ford products. There's a stage with, you know, classic music. So Ferndale really takes the fun part of it to heart. Well, I think first of all, because of the area, hey, it's all automotive. So we want to continue to celebrate our automotive industry and support that. And the auto, auto in, enthusiasts that really love the automobile and all those people who just like to get out and have a good time around and be around their family and friends. From Ferndale, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.